Hello guys, in this V-Ray for 3ds Max tutorial, we will learn how to do final render settings of animations and still images using V-Ray in 3ds Max. I am taking a very basic scene to teach you guys V-Ray render settings for animations and still images, but the same concept can be applied on advanced scenes too. This scene has a V-Ray camera which is animated, an animated object and a still object. Let's play the scene. To render this scene, the first thing that you need to do is that you have to click here or press F10 on the keyboard. Next, make sure your target is set to production rendering mode and your renderer is set to V-Ray. It can be V-Ray 6 or V-Ray 7, it doesn't matter, but do not select the GPU. Select only V-Ray 1. Now click on render elements. Click on add and add V-Ray denoiser. Even if you don't know compositing, you should add V-Ray denoiser. If you know compositing, then it's up to you. You can add a lot of paths from here, especially this one back to beauty or ambient occlusion. But for our case, we are just adding V-Ray denoiser. Next. This thing is very important, mode. If you are doing still images, then do not change it. If you are doing animation in V-Ray, then you should change it to only generate render elements. Then click on GI tab. Next, set your primary engine to brute force and your secondary engine to light cache. If you are doing still images, then keep it to still like this. But if you are doing animation, then change it to animation and it will automatically adjust its values for the animation. Next click on V-Ray tab. In your V-Ray tab, you have to decide your type, progressive or bucket. If you are using progressive rendering, then you only need to change your noise threshold. Currently it is 0 0.01. You can change it between 0 0.01 to 0 0.005. Lower values will produce better result, but they will increase your render time too. So be careful with it. But normally I prefer bucket mode. One of the best advantage of bucket mode is that it is fast and you can use distributive rendering in bucket mode. Next. The default values of bucket mode are enough, it produces a very good result but still if you want to get a little bit better result, you can increase your max subdivisions. Like if your scene has a lot of small images details then you should increase this value. But most of the time these values work for you. After setting these values, I go to my buffer, frame buffer. And in my frame buffer, I check V-Ray raw images. Then click here and just create a folder. Next, change your type to open EXR, dot EXR extension. After that, give it a name, let's say cam01 underscore and clicking on save. The reason to do this is that it will save my passes like V-Ray denoiser pass. It will be saved in this. Next click on common tab. By default time output is set to single. You have to change it either to range or active time segment. If you are clicking on range, then you have to manually enter the frames. In my case, I need the first frame to be 0 and my last frame is 50. So I have to click here 0 and 50. Or you can simply click on active time segment and it will automatically render the whole sequence. After this, make sure your output size is correct. For my Scene, I need it to be HDTV and I need it to be 1920 to 1080 pixels. So I will click here. This is my current render size. After this, you have to click on save on file and you have to select the path and give your file a name. In my case, I want it to be cam01 and I want my image to be PNG. Click on save and your image is saved. 
Lastly, you have to click on view to render and make sure you have selected the correct camera that you want to render. After this, click on render. You can see the rendering has been started. Now if you look here, carefully it is rendering frame number 0. It is doing rendering here. Now it is rendering frame number 2, then it will render frame number 3 and so on. If I open my folder on my desktop, you can see both the EXR1 which contains the denoiser pass and the PNG1 is here. You can see the images are rendering. So I will pause the video here and let my renderer complete. Now guys, all of my renders are completed, both the OpenEXR1 and the JPEG1. The next thing that you need to do if you are doing animation is that you need to type denoiser in your search. When you type denoiser or V-Ray denoise, then this menu will come. After this, you have to click on browse and you have to browse the path and you have to select EXR files. Click on open. It will give you a message. Click yes because we want to import the whole sequence. Next you don't need to change anything. You just simply need to click on denoise. And it will start denoising your images. Let me pause till my denoising is complete. When the denoise is complete, simply close your denoiser and come here. Let me just change it to list. Now if you see in the same folder where you have your original EXR files, you will see denoised EXR files and these are the denoised EXR files that you have to import in your preferred compositing or editing software and from there you have to output them. You have to output a video. This is the way professionals work. Now guys one more thing before we end this tutorial sim and it is very very important if I double click here you can see the colors are same both in my V-Ray frame buffer and in my PNG but this will not happen if you open your EXR formats because their color space is different. So if I select any one of my denoised EXR image and then make sure open EXR sequence is checked and I click on import. It is going to be imported in After Effects. After that simply left click here and drag it on your sequence. Now if you can see that your EXR has a different color. Let's just open the PNG image and compare here. You can see both of them have different colors because they are in different color space. This issue you simply have to go to files if you are using After Effects and then go to project settings. From here go to color and change your color engine to OCIO color manage that was initially in your V-Ray. Also change your bit to 32 bit since we are dealing with EXR images. Leave your display color space to AESC sRGB and click OK. Second thing that you need to do is that you need to click here on your footage, right click, go to interpret footage and click on main. From here again you have to go to your color and this time you have to change override media color space to AESC CG. Now click OK. By this you have successfully make both the color space same. After that what you can do is that you can simply do your compositing and other things and when you are done with all of these things you want to render out a video from After Effects and to render out a video from After Effects you have to go to your compositing and click on add to render queue or press ctrl m on the keyboard. Now there is one more thing here you need to do and it is this you have to click here again on your output module name and it will pop up a window then go to colors and make sure your output color space is checked to output sRGB. Click OK. 
Finally, give a file name to your file, save it and render it. After all the rendering is done, you have a video. If you play it, you can see its color matches exactly in as your after effect. So guys, this is the workflow that I use to render an image sequence that is EXR image sequence from 3ds Max and V-Ray and then I bring it into After Effects which is my preferred compositing software. You can use any compositing software that you want but remember you need to change your color space in your compositing software and from here I render out a video. So I hope guys you like this tutorial. If you like it give it a like. If you love it subscribe to my channel share my videos keep creating guys bye bye.